everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since you guys have seen me in front of the camera, and today you find me in front of one of my mantles. Now you guys know that I love high-end design on a very low budget, and I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs. And I'm really excited about this one because when I do Dollar Tree DIYs, I don't want them to look like Dollar Tree DIYs, if you get what I mean. So I'm really excited about this project that I'm gonna share with you guys today because I think I was able to accomplish a high-end style that you would never guess came from Dollar Tree. Now, I have been looking for new stocking hangers for my family of five, and I have not been able to find anything that was reasonably priced and also to my liking. So I decided, why don't I make some of my own? The biggest problem that I was gonna face was how to make it hold an actual stocking and be sturdy because there's not a lot of things in Dollar Tree that you can think of that have a lot of weight, but I was able to find a solution to that problem. Now, this is what I'm talking about right here. These are the stocking hangers that I came up with from a Dollar Tree, and I am gonna show you how not only to make them look super stylish and customize them to your taste, but also to make sure they actually function and are heavy and work just like a real one. Now I knew I wanted white little gift boxes for my stocking hangers, but Dollar Tree doesn't carry any white plain ones. So I picked these up and I picked five of them and these were located in the gift wrapping and party section. Now, if you're into more bright colors or silver or glittery um, boxes, they already have these that you won't have to alter at all. Now I did choose to paint mine in order to give them the look that I wanted, but if you don't want to paint, but you don't like these either, you can always Mod Podge the scrapbook paper onto them, or you can even use gift wrap paper. And of course I use my favorite Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. I am almost done with this little can of paint. I'm gonna have to get a new one pretty soon. Now I did have to give them at least two coats and I even included the lids as well. Now, of course, these are stocking hangers and I needed hooks for them and I picked up five of the Dollar Tree wreath hangers for this. But of course, they were a little too long, so I had to take them to my mantle, as you see my lovely model here, and figure out where we needed to cut them and where we needed to bend them. And we just marked those areas with a marker. Now we had metal snips from a previous project that we had to work on and um, we used that in order to cut this. You probably already have some around your house, they're pretty handy. I'll go ahead and link to ours below. And we just cut them all the same length. Then once they were cut, we just marked the areas where they needed to be bent. All right, so the man of steel is actually trying to bend this piece of metal with his bare hands. Can he do it? Is he really Superman? Look at that, it's actually right there on the little, <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> Boom. Oh damn, he did it. So the average person may want to put this in a vise and let it be all technical, but the Latino engineering, that's how we do it. <laughs> Bent, no vise, no nothing. It might also be that the metal is really soft. Yeah, well, you know, you don't need to let the truth get in the way of a good story. Okay, so the next step was to spray paint these white. I started on the bottom, gave it a couple coats, and then flipped them over and did the same thing. All right, once those were dry, it was ready to assemble. Now, don't worry about the top part of the actual hook. It doesn't need to be um, painted the entire way because that part is gonna be glued on underneath that little box. I used a combination of both E6000 and hot glue for this. All right, so next I needed to add some weight to this box and I used those little packs of river rocks that you can find in the garden section of Dollar Tree and I just basically glued them inside of the box. And then after they were all in there, I kind of added a little bit of extra glue in order to keep them in place. Then I simply hot glued the top to the box. 
Now after they were assembled, I did add some more paint to touch up several areas that needed another coat. But at this point, they looked a little plain for me. However, they were holding up pretty darn good. Those hooks were staying on there pretty awesome. But I needed something else. So I decided to add a little bit of glitter to the top lid. And for this, I simply applied Mod Podge and I used the glossy kind because I kind of wanted it to shine a little bit. And I just poured the glitter on top and then I repeated it for all four sides. Now I did not film this, but I did add another layer of Mod Podge to seal all that glitter and prevent it from falling everywhere. Now since Dollar Tree doesn't have any buffalo checker at this moment, I did get this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. And then what I did was I just wrapped it around and hot glued it on the top lid. I wanted to add another layer of ribbon, so I added this shimmery burlap ribbon as well. I got it from Hobby Lobby as well, and all this ribbon was half off. Next, I glued on a smaller piece of that burlap ribbon and hot glued it like this. Next, it was time to make the bow. Now, this ribbon right here is actually from Dollar Tree, and I made this bow very similar to the little bow toppers that I used for my Dollar Tree farmhouse Christmas trees. And then I used the small shimmery burlap ribbon in order to create the bow and hold it together. I use a lighter in order to prevent my ribbon from fraying at the ends and I have another tutorial where I explain how that works and I show you exactly how to do that. I'll make sure to link to it in the cards above and in my description box. Then finally I attach the bow to the box. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to give my video a thumbs up. And just like my other DIYs, you can totally customize them to suit your style. If you don't want to make the bow permanent, you don't have to. You can actually just tie it to the top and then the following year when you decide to change your color scheme, just change the bows as well. And they will go perfect with your new decor. But that's not the only thing you can do to customize them or change them up. You can even change the color of your boxes as well and just paint them. So if this year you did white, next year you can do red, the following year you can do purple, I don't know. But as you can see, you can use them over and over again and get the best use out of them just by changing their colors and that's stuff that you can't do with store-bought stocking hangers. I am thrilled at how good they look, and I truly believe they don't look Dollar Tree DIY-ish. So, I will see you guys in another video very soon. I got a lot more fun DIYs for you this season. Until then, adios.